hi everyone you're welcome back to my channel my name is nancy and if you are new to my channel kindly subscribe share and like my videos in today's class i'll be showing you how to make this trendy illusion neckline for the front piece of the top i'll be making use of a pattern paper which i folded into two the first step is to row the starting line which is the shoulder line the next line is the bust line which is the round arm all divided by two Why the next line is the bust point The next line is the under bust line which is 12 inches And the last line is the waist line which is the half length of the top or the half length of the gown you are making it's actually 15 inches but plus one inch so in allowance and that will be 16 inches after placing down the vertical measurement the next step is to mark the neck width the neck width is 3.5 inches while the neck depth is 4 inches Now I'll use the French curve to connect these two points together to form a round neckline. The shoulder measurement for this client is 14 inches divided by 2, that will be 7 inches plus half an inch so in allowance to which you'll be attaching the sleeve. And this will be 7.5 inches altogether. Now on this 7.5 inches point, I'll mark one inch below that point to connect it to the neck width, which forms the shoulder slope. The next step is to connect this point vertically to the bust line. Now I'll place the tape on the vertical line to mark the midpoint. Now I'll use a French curve to trace out the armhole curve. So let's get started to mark out the illusion which will be placed in the center of the front piece. Looking at the picture of the dress on the thumbnail, you can see that the illusion didn't get down to the waistline but it's about 1.5 inches away from the waistline so because of the sewing allowance which is one inch i added to the waistline i'll be marking 2.5 inches above the waistline next step is to place the tape on the shoulder line to mark half inch above the bust line so this half inch i marked here is just to guide me on where to place the wideness of the center illusion so the wideness of the center illusion i want to work with is four inches now i'll use a curve driller to connect these two points the next step is to connect these points to the midpoints of the ham o So after getting the illusion for the center piece, the next step is to mark the bust start. A bust span is 7 inches divided by 2, that's 3.5 inches, plus half inch sewing allowance and that will be 4 inches. So I'll mark 4 inches on the waistline, 4 inches on the under bust line, 4 inches on the nipple line, and 4 inches on the bust line. Now I'll connect these points 
together. The straight line is the center dart line. So on the waistline, I'll mark 1 inch on this side, but it is for a large size person, you should mark 1.5 inches. Now on the other side, I'll mark just 1 inch for both a small size and large size person. On the under bust line, I'll mark 1 inch on this side, but for a large size person, you should mark 1.5 inches. And on this side, I'll mark just 1 inch. Next step is to connect the under bust points to the waist points as shown. On the nipple line, I'll mark 1 inch below the point, which I'll connect to the underbust using my curve driller. So for the side bust here, yeah, where I have the bust line, I'll mark 1.5 inches after the line. And on the nipple points, I'll mark half an inch above that line, which I'll connect to these points as shown. So this is all for the bust that and the next step is to place the horizontal measurement. Here you can see that there's a dart spacing below the illusion line which is about 1.5 inches wide. The next step is to replace this dart spacing to the side of the large bustier as shown. So when swing it doesn't shorten the ham all. On the bust line, I'll place the bust circumference divided by 4 plus 1 inch that spacing and that'll be 9.5 inches plus 2 inches swing allowance to the side. Now I'll connect this point to the 1.5 inches I extended initially to form the new arm O curve. On the waistline, the waist circumference divided by 4 is 6.5 inches plus 2 inches that spacing and that will be 8.5 inches. Plus 2 inches swing allowance to the side. Now I'll connect the bust circumference to the waist circumference as shown. The final step on this front piece is to add half an inch to the shoulder slope to which you'll be attaching it to the back piece. So yeah, I'm going to use the scissors to cut out the front piece.
The next step is to place the pattern on the fabric to cut out. So for the center illusion, I'm going to place this on a lace fabric. To add just half an inch to this side that looks like an arc. Yeah, I folded the fabric into two and I placed the center illusion on it. Now I'll mark half an inch on the side as shown. To trim out the illusion. The next step is to fold the main fabric you'll be working with into two. To place the center piece, and I'll also add half an inch to the side of this piece. Now I'll fold the main fabric into two again, then I'll place the side piece of the front piece on it to cut out this pattern exactly the way it is, without adding any allowance to the side. All right, guys, so the front piece is ready. The next step is to cut out the back piece. Yeah, I have the fabric folded into two. The first step is to mark the starting line. The next step is to mark the zipper allowance, which is about 2 inches wide. Now I'll place the tape from the starting line to mark the bust line, which is 7 inches. And the half length line, which is 15 inches plus 1 inch sewing allowance, and it became 16 inches. So the neck width I used for the front piece was 3.5 inches, so I'll also mark 3.5 inches for the back piece starting from the zipper allowance the shoulder measurement for the front piece was 7.5 inches and i also mark 7.5 inches which i'll connect this point in form of the straight line to the bust line the next step is to get the midpoint of this line then i'll connect it to the bust line as shown yeah i forgot to slant the shoulder but i'll be doing that later before cutting out the back piece On the waistline, I'll mark the bust pan, which is 4 inches. And on the bust line, I'll also mark 4 inches. Now, I'll mark 1 inch below the bust line. Then on the waistline, I'll mark half inch on both sides. To connect the three points together, on the bust line, I'll place the bust circumference divided by 4 plus 2 inches sewing allowance to the side. And on the waist line, I'll place the waist circumference divided by 4 plus the dart spacing. And 
and two inches to in allowance to the side now for the neck depth you can decide to use any neck depth of your choice or any neckline style but yeah i just want it to be a small round neck so i'll be marking 1.5 inches from the starting line to connect it to the neck width and to avoid a purge zipper at the center back i'll mark just one inch on the waistline to connect it to the two inches now for the slant shoulder which i forgot to include initially i'm going to mark one inch below this point to connect it to the neck width the next step is to add half an inch above the shoulder slope to which i'll be attaching the shoulder of the front piece to Alright guys, we are done cutting the front piece and the back piece of this style. I hope this tutorial was helpful. And in the next tutorial, I'll be showing you how to sew these pieces together with the side flounces included. Thanks for watching to the very end. And if you are new here, my name is Nancy. Kindly subscribe, share and like my videos. And also put on your notification bell to be notified when I upload new videos. Thank you.